Okay, welcome to the second half of the quadratic formula and discriminant video. This is where I'm mainly going to talk about the discriminant. And just a quick review, you saw on the last page what the discriminant is. Remember, the discriminant is the part inside the quadratic formula. So here's your quadratic formula, negative e plus or minus square root all over 2a. The discriminant is this part inside the square root. That's the discriminant, okay? And it tells us something. If we, if we didn't even calculate this whole thing and we just calculate the discriminant part, it gives us information. For example, if that ends up being a negative number, if it's less than zero, that means there are no real solutions. And the reason that is, is we can't really have negatives inside square roots, can we? we what is the, like, think about what's the square root of negative one, all right? And you could think about that for, for a long time, but basically there's no real number that, that would go in there. So if it's a negative, there are zero solutions. If this number ends up being zero, then there's exactly one solution. And that's because if you had something and you plus or minus zero, you'd get the same thing. For example, five plus zero is the same thing as five minus zero. And so there's only one solution. And if you get a positive value there, you're gonna get two solutions. And the reason why you get two solutions is let's say that there ends up being a four in here. That means we're gonna, the square root of four is two. So we're gonna do plus or minus two. So like before, five plus two is seven and five minus two is three. So we get two different solutions. Uh, or two possible results. So that's how that works. Graphically, what does that look like? Well, right here in example three, it says, is the discriminant of the function below positive, zero, or negative? Well, let's just look at this thing real quick. Important to note, look, solutions are when we cross the x-axis, and this happens twice. So we could say for certain that this one is uh, the discriminant, since there's two solutions, remember, since it happens twice, then the discriminant must be positive. And that's, that's all we'd say, positive. It must be positive because it crosses it twice. So let me just throw out a couple other examples. Let's do, let's say, what would it look like if it was zero? Okay, if the discriminant is zero. Well, remember, if it's zero, then that means there's exactly one solution. And so what would one solution look like on a graph? It would probably look something like, my drawing's not gonna be the greatest, but it would look something like that. Where notice it only crosses the x-axis exactly one time, which means that the vertex of this thing would be right there on the x-axis. And it could be opening up and doing the opposite, but that's what zero would look like. And then finally, what would negative look like? What would it look like if it was negative? So remember, that means there's zero solutions. So that means it would never cross the x-axis. So here's an example of a parabola that never crosses the x-axis. See, the parabola peaks before it ever even gets to the x-axis, so it would never cross. Another example could be up here, right? Could also be uh, on the top, like that. There's a parabola that never touches the x-axis. It has no solutions. So I kind of answered that question for you. What do you think a graph would probably look like if the discriminant was negative or zero? Here's your examples, zero and negative. Now we got some ideas. Okay, moving on. Let's do this problem together, example four. It says, gives us a function and it says find the value of the discriminant. Okay, so that's one of the things we need to do. Find the value of the discriminant and use that to determine how many solutions, how many solutions the function has. Okay, so the discriminant, let's, we'll do this in two parts. So what is the discriminant? Again, remember, it's just that part in the formula that follows this little, this little part, b squared minus 4ac. Well, here's your a, here's your b, here's your c. So if I would plug everything in, I'd get 12 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times C, which is 24. Well, 12 squared is 144 minus uh, 4 times 2 is 8. And what's 8 times 24? I just plugged in my calculator. It's 192. So 144 minus 192 equals negative 48. And it's important. A lot of students make a mistake here with this minus sign. Remember, that's going to be minus that whole time. If there was a negative over here, if one of these were negative, then it would be a negative times a negative, and this would turn into a plus. So don't forget that. That's a minus sign, and it could easily turn into a plus if one of these were negative. Anyway, we end up with negative 48. So there's the discriminant. It's negative 48. Therefore, how many solutions does it have? Well, it has zero solutions. And just to recap, how do I know that it has zero solutions? Let's go back to this handy chart. This is a really, really handy chart for you to have. Look. Remember, if the discriminant is negative, if it's less than zero, then it has zero solutions. Simple as can be. 
All right. That's it for this video. See you guys on the next one.